Right. You know what I'm saying? So the spirit that we receive, you know what I mean? The spirit that we receive, we can't we can't come up with this old body. You know what I mean? We can't come with our old ways. We gotta come with the new ways that in that that, that are dressed properly, showing that we're dressed properly in the spirit of God. You know what I mean? So the relationship that we are building, religion is a joke. But relationship is what it's all about. When we have the opportunity to build a relationship with the Most High, we should really, really be taking it. Hey, I want to learn more about you. I want to be, now that I'm in your company, I want to present myself in such a way. Think about it. When you go to get a job, you know, they give you a uniform, and you have to come in there with uniform mentality. You have to be like them, operate like them. But you go to the king any way you want. Right. You know, and, and just like in a marriage, when you get into your marriage, you can't treat your wife like your girlfriend or some girl you used to know. You have to treat her something special. You have to be prepared and dressed to be her husband. Right. You know what I mean? And so in that particular respect, this is where relationship comes into play. How do you respect the relationship? A lot of people look at God like he's not important. You know, I got time for you later, God, or, you know, after I handle what I got to handle, God, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And God's like, I'm the most. I'm the host with the most. <laughs> and I invited you to this party, and you show up here like this? No, nah, I don't want you here. You got to roll. Right. And, and if I could just... And that's... If I, and if I could just piggyback on what you're saying, one thing that, that, that st- sticks out for me when it comes to relationship and religion, when, when, when one of Jesus's, uh, followers ask him, what's the most important commandment? And then, and he said, you know, first, of course, love, you know, thy Lord, thy God with all thy, thy, uh, thy heart. But then he also said, you know, but, but he, he said, in addition, you know, in the same breath, he said, in addition, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I think that's important because our relationship with God, in my estimate, is inextricable with the way that we handle our relationships with others. Religion allows you to follow certain conventions and you could be religious and not deal with other people. You're like, you know what? I'm religious. I don't want to deal with them because they're unreligious. But it's two parts. Part of it is loving God and the other part of it is the relationships that you have with others. And man, it probably took me 43 years to, to, to get to that point. Cause I felt like, Hey, I can just have my own religion and my, my beliefs and bump what y'all doing. But I don't think that you can separate the, the way that you treat other people with God and, 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 uh, with your relationship with God. And Jesus said, all the commandments hinge upon that. And, and, and you know, and it's kind of funny. When you think about the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments are actually hinged directly on that. And see, the one thing about it is, there's one commandment, the Great Commandment, and the Great Commission, Great Commandment is love. Right. Okay? Now, when you say love, love what? First of all, loving God is different. The God comes before, you know, anything and anyone, you know. But in addition, love is not, oh, well, I love God, but I don't, I'm, so if I love him, I know. Love is love. But God says, love me and love your neighbor and your brother. Right? right. And the thing is, how do I show my love to you? I'm just, I love you, God. No, you show me your love in the way how you love your neighbor and your brother. If you can honor the relationship between you and them, then you can honor the relationship between me and you. Right. But if you don't honor the relationship between me and you, you don't even see me in them. So you disrespected me and I'm in them. That's heavy. That's heavy. Hey, I, I got a question for you on that. I'm going to put you on, on the spotlight. So considering that, how do you prepare yourself? You know, it, considering that, how do you prepare yourself to love this person who loves your daughter and, and wants to become one with your daughter? How do you get to know that? Because I haven't even come close to that threshold yet. How do you love him in the same way that your daughter loves him? And in the same way, he how, how how do you foster that? I mean, I don't even know how to approach the, that. The, the beautiful thing is this. We learn hate before we learn love. And that's the problem. We learn to restrict or we learn to uh, buck up before we learn to embrace or to open up. 
you know, so in that particular respect, we uh, we want to show them that, hey, uh, I'm no pushover. You ain't going to do what you want to do to my daughter and all that stuff like that. And see, that's the wrong attitude. And what happens is, because what we establish with them, we don't have to set the tone. Love sets the tone. Right. You know, when we go into the situation with a loving attitude and a loving heart, you know, love is the first thing. That if that person is not a loving person, then you won't be, they, they, there, it won't be a sincere relationship between you and them. And then, you know, it is what it is. But if you go to it and you weren't real and you don't have a sincere relationship, you don't have anyone to blame but yourself. It, but it, if you go in there with an open heart and a loving attitude, that's why some people say, I don't get along with my in-laws. Why? But but it's heavy. Let, let, let me say this. Let me say this and tell me what you think about this. In my youth, I've all, always had a precarious relationship with my significant, whether it was my girlfriend or uh, uh, in the beginning, I never really have a great relationship with that extended family. And, and as a younger man, man, I was just like, well, so what? You know, I, I kind of stuck my chest out like, well, you guys accept me or not. I don't even really care. It's between me and her. So now coming up into this, what I'm coming up into now, I'm now realizing just how important that is, fostering an environment where we all can be, you know, can love each other. So, you know, how... So, so give me some clues, man. How do I go into the relationship with my new extended family and foster that love? Am I responsible for it? What do you think? Well, um, first of all, yes. You're definitely responsible for it. Uh, because you're responsible for interjecting and uh, adding to love. That's your job. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, if God's word Right, it says no one should add uh, should add to or take away from his word. Right now, a lot of people look at it and say, "Well, that means if you add to the scriptures or whatever." You know what I mean? Do 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 me do me a quick favor, God, do a favor, cause hold that for one second. Let me answer my my mom's phone call, and I want to hear what you got to say. Hold on one second. Hey, mom. Hi, Nigel. Sorry to bother you. One kind of children have a chance, but they made the last three, please. Absolutely. I'll make sure that somebody comes down and does that for you right now. Thank you, Nigel. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Love you. Hold on one second, cuz. Let me just tell the kids, uh, one of the kids to run down and uh, and uh, take care of my mom. Hey, in the meantime, y'all, I'm going I'm to rock this. Y'all have heard this before. Y'all know the song Lost in the Storm by Bo Jones. I actually got Bo Jones on the line with me. Man, he blessed us, and he's going to... Uh, continue explaining what the question I gave him was like, is it my responsibility to foster the love with my my uh, my extended family? I'm going to play the song for you, come back, and he's going to kick that live. All right. I'm not complaining. 
just tell me, tell me what to do. Hey, that's Lost in the Storm by Bo Jones. You can actually pick that up on iTunes. Uh, the Book of Bozy. Man, it's a, it's a hot joint. If you haven't, I know you've heard it if you've been listening to the show. Uh, but if you haven't picked it up, go on iTunes. Pick that up. Hot joint, Book of Bozy. I don't even want to interrupt it because that's my joint. Hold on, especially this part. Check it out. And it seems as though we've lost our way. What to do? The clouds are dark and there's thunder, and the rain drops are pounding. Waves rage in the sea. I'm trying to tread in rough water. Y'all gotta check that out again. That's Lost in the Storm by Bo Jones. I actually got Bo Jones on the line. He called in. While we were doing the show, he didn't even know. And uh, and and again, uh, if you just tune in, the name of the show is Religion versus Relationship. And I was talking to to Bo about, you know, how to how to foster that love as you go into a a, a new relationship with someone. You got a whole new family, a new father, new mother, and and how do you, you know how do you bridge that gap? How do you go into those new relationships with love? And uh, and Cuz was kind of uh, touching on that, so here we go. I'm, I'm gonna give him back the floor. Well, I was saying, you know, and, and, and it's kind of funny in your in your explaining it. You said the perfect thing. You said you got a new mother, new father. You know, what I mean, there's a scripture that says, "Behold, I'm I I'm doing a new thing," right? Right. And when you see that God has a way of creating or placing in place new people into your life. It's like, uh, I want you to think about how you've been renewed. And this is why you should foster the love. This is the reason. Think about all that you've lost in the last few years of your life. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, you, you don't love any less. You know what I mean? It's just the fact that things have transitioned. But then you have to look at the rebirth. Everything comes in a cycle. You've received, like, you, you've lost a wife. You know what I mean? And now you're gaining a new wife. You know what I mean? Uh, you lost a parent. Now you're gaining new parents, you know, so when you lost a brother, you have a new brother, you know, all these different things that come into play. God says, you know, that, you know, he will be there for you and that he will be everything that you need. So everything that you need, he's sending you. Some people don't get what you have. You know, they don't get a new wife or a new husband. Some people don't get a new set of parents, but God has given you exactly what you need. Wow. That's me. That means God. There's there's some things He wants to work on with you, and there's some guidance that He's placing into your life in order for you to achieve what it is you're supposed to achieve. See, on your own, you can only achieve what you can do. Right. But that's not how God works. You know what I mean? So that means there's that is an indication that there's some great growth for you because you've received more of what you had in your youth. So that means God is still working on you. Right. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't realize they don't wish to accept that. They want to believe that they have it all in tune, and not that you don't. But the point about it is God is still doing the work in your life. Fostering the love, if you didn't embrace them in love, you wouldn't receive the gift that God has for you. Right. You know, so it's your love and your willingness to absorb, uh, to receive, uh, and also to push love into that relationship, you know, is that that's your your choice, but it's also where your blessing is. Because if you choose not to, it's like walking away from a blessing that God has already placed in your life. And I don't care if they mistreated you. You know what I mean? It's still a blessing. So so let me ask you. Let me ask you. You know, because a lot of people go into it and they're like, oh, man. You know, and, and you know it's always negative thoughts that come in your mind. You're like, man, they don't really like me. Or, you know what I mean? Or, 